think my first experience of collective action, when I was we managed to throw our dad out of the house when we were kids. When I was younger, my father was always someone who we were afraid of rather than loved. When my mother would say, I'm going to tell your father exactly what you've done when he got home. You'd be paralysed with fear. Time would slow down to a snail's pace and he'd agonise in the space in between what you've done and the moment when he'd come home. And he'd know when he'd come home because the car would pull in and the headlights would whirl across the front of the house, splintering through the neck curtains, dancing across the wallpaper of my bedroom. And then it would pull to a halt and the key would go into the lock and the shouting would start and the belt buckle would come, falling. There came the day we wanted him to go. We wanted him to leave, but he just wouldn't. Crazy, I know. He was always so arrogant. He just said, this is my mother's house and I'm not going. And so what could we do? How do you answer back to no? And so it went on for some pretty surreal weeks. How could we get him out? It was the day the barring order came into action that he would legally not be able to come within a certain distance of the house. It was an anxious morning, I remember. He woke up. I felt like he could go no further, like it was all about to crash down. An argument started in the hall, where the green carpet of the stairs flowed down to meet the worn-out circle in front of the front door. My mum kept telling him to get out, get out, and then the pitch turned to Walder pitch, a pitch of action. Slowly, our feet came to the landing to look down at the scene that was happening before us. Sleepy, socked feet. My father just stood there and said no. And the anger and the ex exhaustion just came all at once. And she screamed, help me, help me get him out. Jesus, help me get him out. And we ran down to help her. We were six kids in our family. So that made 12 hands, and our hand reached for him. The little ones held onto his knees and his legs and tried pathetically to push him out. But it was really the push of my brother that reefed him towards the front door. There was an awful commotion trying to get the front door open. We turned the latch and squeezed it a little bit and pried it a little bit open, but his hand had fired and he shut it again. It nearly chopped our fingers off till finally the door stood wide open, a gaping hole of scandal for the whole street to see, a gash of gossip for the entire cul-de-sac. All of us heaved forward. The whole Caravaggio scene surged through the front door into the white light of the front garden. And we'd done it. We'd done it collectively. We'd done it collectively, collectively. His face looked like a slapped arse as he stood there looking at us and we slammed the door shut. First there was a silent shock. What have we done? But that gave way to nervous laughter. The mice had eaten the cat, and I was certainly a mouse. <coughs> Woohoo! We opened all the windows to let the fresh air in. Open covered, we'd never been allowed. We even went into his room. We wanted to do some terrible mischief, but my mother told us, don't go mad. She told us, Let's clean the energy. Let's cleanse the energy. Clap the bad energy away. Go about the house and clap anywhere where the bad energy could be. So that's what we did. We went about the house clapping. A strange movie ceremony of our family. We were clapping all the years away and things would never be the same again. We decided we'd have a party, but there wasn't really much party food in the house. So we just made it with what we had. Things were happier then for a little while. One promised us that he'd never come back. And we all cheered. Mob rule after a little revolution. She took his belt and she promised us that we'd never find our skin. She threw it in the bin. That black snake that would lick you till late in the night for a petty crime. Mum even started wearing jeans again, and we all agreed she looked great. 
We didn't have a car for a while, so she started walking to the shops, but she got really fit, and the fridge was filled with all different kinds of things, different to the old brands that we'd eaten before. We all felt like we were coming out of a marriage. We all felt like we were putting our lives back together again. We all felt empowered. We were like six little Tina Turners living somewhere in Dublin, and there was one Ike Turner, and the most important thing, that he was somewhere else. And we were going to make it. We were going to live. And after that in school, the teachers didn't really seem to care, for a little while anyway, if I didn't do my homework. And the school counsellor used to invite me for long talks in his office with tea and biscuits, and I felt really special. Everyone thought we should be sad. Everyone thought we should be sad about what happened. But they didn't know we were clapping. That we were clapping. We were clapping.